We reviewed over six Tokyo Treat boxes in the past year to bring you our most detailed Tokyo Treat review so far. For this video, we based our Tokyo Treat review on the following key areas. What's inside every box, snack selection itself, average number of sweet versus savoury snacks, the taste, freshness of the snacks in terms of how long do they last and do they taste good, the monthly theme, exclusiveness or rareness of the snacks included, <gasps> delivery and shipping, value for money, and our final verdict. <laughs> if you're new to our channel, we review snack boxes based off various factors, so do check out our channel if you're looking for the best snacks to try. We'll be showing you four boxes throughout this video, but if you want a closer look at what we got, head to our website for our Tokyo Treat box review write-up. Tokyo Treat aims to share the coolest and craziest Japanese snacks and candy every month, as well as give you a taste of modern life in Japan. So inside every Tokyo Treat subscription box, you'll get 15 to 20 full-size Japanese snacks that are usually seasonal or trending in Japan or related to the theme. You'll also get an illustrated 24-page snack handbook that will tell you more about the monthly theme, allergens for the snacks, and some cultural events, fun facts related to the month's theme. For the snack selection itself, there will always be one exclusive Japanese drink, one rare Kit Kat flavour, some traditional candy, one instant ramen, one pack of crunchy chips, crisps, or pop snack, and some kind of cake, cookie, or pastry. Majority of the snacks will be single items and aren't duplicates of each other. Apart from some items like the ramen and drink, most of these are a good size to share between a few friends. For larger items like Kit Kat, this comes in a family pack so you'll find 8 to 10 mini Kit Kats inside. From the boxes we received over the past year, we split the snacks into sweet and savoury types to see if they lean towards one side. Not including the drink, here's our quick breakdown of the types of snacks we got from unboxing Tokyo Treat over 6 different months. On average, you'll get 60% of sweet and 40% of savoury snacks. But that being said, we do think a 40% ratio of savoury snacks is already really good. The size of the savoury snacks are typically a lot bigger too, which helps to balance this out even more. When we compare Tokyo Treat to other Japanese snack boxes that we've tried, Tokyo Treat still has the most balanced ratio between sweet versus savoury. Let us know in the comments below if you've seen a more balanced snack box. In terms of taste, Tokyo Treat snacks definitely lean more towards being heavier and richer in taste. The snacks are also more junky, but none of these alone are too salty and will make you thirsty. The snacks are almost always Moorish and easy to finish in one sitting without you even noticing. <gasps> For the sweet side of things, we don't have a huge sweet tooth, so we're quite happy to see that the sweet nibbles are smaller in size for a nice little burst of sweetness every now and then. The snacks inside the Tokyo Treat Box will appeal to a wide range of people, but a lot of people will also compare Tokyo Treat to Boksu and Sakuroko, two popular services with Japanese snacks for a more mature palate. If you want to see what our take is on Tokyo Treat vs Boksu, do check out our other video. A Tokyo Treat subscription box usually doesn't last more than two weeks in our household as we snack almost every other night. But if you're looking to savour these Japanese treats for a whole month, you'll be fine. Over the past year, we checked through the expiry date for the snacks and majority of the items will have at least three months. But fresher items like cakes and pastries, the expiry date might only be one to two months. So far, we've not received items with an expiry date that's less than one month. The monthly themes for Tokyo Treat are usually based on seasons, regions, or events happening in Japan. The theme translates really well to each element of the box, from the guide, snacks, and sometimes even the design of the box itself. The guide is always a fun read filled with interesting facts about things related to the month's theme. It could be events happening in Japan, some history, to Japanese legends and folklore. Even though we've lived in Japan for a long time, and we think we know quite a bit about Japanese culture, we're always surprised by local tidbits and cultural insights that the guide will introduce to us. For each snack, there's also a small description to tie it back to the theme. As the monthly theme for Tokyo Treat changes, there were some themes that we thought were better than other months for the past year, but this is also just down to our personal preference and comes down to the fact that we've tried a lot of different snack boxes, so it does get harder to impress us. 
So for this part of our Tokyo Treat review, we'll be focusing on showing you themes from four different boxes to help you get a feel for yourself. For September and October, the theme was Moon Festival Snacking and Halloween Snack Wall. The themes set on cultural events are usually more visible from the get-go, as the boxes are also a bit different from their signature bright orange colour. The limited edition snacks from Japan they include during these periods are more interesting in flavour, and the cool packaging helps to make the themes stand out even more. For example, we love that we got this Kit Kat in October, which was sweet potato that's classic for autumn, and this cute ghost vampire and bat on the packaging. Even the smaller candy treats had a little witch hat and pumpkin on it. Another great monthly themed Japanese snack box is Sakurako. They're a solid favourite of ours and we reviewed them in details, so make sure you check that out if you're a fan of Japanese kitchenware. For June and November, the theme was Osaka Snackation and Mount Fuji Snack Venture. To us, the themes based on regions in Japan are usually not as obvious compared to the cultural ones at the beginning, but they are still very well themed through the selection of snack picks and the stories they choose to tell inside the guide. For example, in the June box, there were senbei inspired by Osaka street food, takoyaki and okonomiyaki. Meanwhile, for November, we got a Mount Fuji shaped cookie and a sponge cake made from the region. We also love how there was a DIY candy toy kit to make your own ice cream. Now, you don't get these Japanese DIY candy kits inside Tokyo Street all the time, but we have seen them a few times now. They also do a great job at not repeating the regional themes and putting a new twist on cultural events too. A few years ago, the theme for June was snacking Shibuya, and we haven't seen this come back yet. Of course, if a product has been around for so many years, it will have some criticism. Here's the two biggest criticisms about the snacks in Tokyo Treat that we've seen so far on Reddit. One is people complain that the snacks are cheap candies that you can find at most Asian corner stores. And two, some people say that the snacks repeat regularly. So we decided to look at these criticisms ourselves, starting with the first one on how rare are the snacks exactly. In the UK, we actually haven't found these snacks in some of the largest Asian supermarkets, and we haven't found the snacks available to purchase on Amazon either. Maybe these comments were left by people who live in Asia, but the snacks are definitely rare and hard to get in the UK. For the part about the snacks being cheap, we think there's a good balance between candies which might cost about 150 yen in Japan, depending on if you buy in a supermarket or konbini, and some items that are around 600 yen, which you can't find everywhere in Japan. For the second criticism about snacks repeating regularly, there is some truth in this, but not entirely true. See, Tokyo Treat does this thing where from time to time they will include a surprise snack that's a favourite from the past month. This doesn't happen every month, and if it does, it's usually just one small item. The other criticism we've seen is around how long they take to ship. But from our own experience, it's not something we can relate to, as we've always received these snack boxes within two weeks of ordering. There's only been one month, which it came maybe in three weeks, but it arrived safely and as usual, it was signed on delivery, which is a huge plus point for us when it comes to getting food items delivered. We've received our Tokyo Treat subscription boxes throughout the seasons in the UK, and none of the snacks we've got inside have melted, not even in the mini heatwave we had here. While we don't remember any snacks being crushed when we opened them, they do pack the snacks pretty tightly with each other, so we're not surprised if some of the more delicate snacks could have cracked. But again, this hasn't happened to us. Tokyo Treat has a few subscription options, ranging from getting it as a one-off Japanese snack box to subscribing to their monthly plan. And of course, if you subscribe to more months or the annual plan, it's going to be a bit cheaper. Now, shipping isn't included in the price, but when you compare it to other Japanese snack boxes on the market that are an extra 10 to 20 USD, um, they come out at a similar price range to each other. For Tokyo Treat, they have regular promo codes on their site, which will give you rewards and special items. And you can also find some sort of coupon and discount code available for first-time customers. For example, we were given a discount code by Tokyo Treat to share with our subscribers when they noticed we made a video about the services in the past. You'll also see social media influencers sharing their code too, so it seems to us it'll be pretty easy for you to find one. 
For monthly subscribers, you can also enter their photo contest, post on their community forum to win some free snacks, sometimes even a free box, as well as limited edition Japanese souvenirs. To us, Tokyo Treat Snack Box is good value for money from both the absolute value of the snacks and the experience it brings. We did a rough calculation that the snacks inside are probably worth around 150 yen to 600 yen, meaning the total item value would already be between 3,500 to 4,000 yen, not including the cost involved in packaging and curating a theme box with a detailed English guide which tells you exactly what each snack is to. For the people who can't fly to Japan because of time or money, the Tokyo Treat Snack Box is a great way to experience a part of Japan. So overall, our experience over the past year with Tokyo Treat has been great and definitely worth it for us. The subscription box is always fun to open, the snacks are surprising in flavour and never the same in selection. The themes are very immersive and well thought out from the box, guide, all the way to the taste of the snacks. So we think it would appeal to a wide range of ages and make a great gift for kids, friends and family. It's also great value for money and to us it's nostalgic to be able to taste Japanese snacks and be reminded of our time living in Japan. Like this video and let us know in the comments what would you like us to review next.